today is going to look at some things that are not um, text-based inputs, but are some other kind of inputs, just to see how you go about handling those. Um, so I've got this form here. The first thing I've got on it is a drop-down menu. Um, it's got the name Drop Example, and then my options have value 1 and 2. Um, so I'm going to go into my process page, and let's process that. So drop result. Um, so what is the name of the thing in the post array? Well, just like with a regular input, it's the name that's coming from here. So the name that I'm looking for is drop example. And the value that it's going to hold is whatever the user is going to select from these two options, one or two. And we should still clean this up because somebody nefarious can sort of look at what our form looks like and make a fake one and submit to our processing thing um, from their own site or something. So we want to always clean up what we're getting, um, even if it's not something the user can type directly into. So I'm just going to echo that so you can see it. Let me go to my page over here. Open this guy up. Okay. Here's my form. I'm only looking at this part. Let's change it to be two. Submit it. There it is, TWO. So things to point out to you um, is that the value it's getting is the one from here, whatever the value is set at, not the thing that's in between the two tags, but this thing. This is what's being passed to the uh, form handler. Okay. Similar thing with radio buttons. So here, okay, let me change the name here. So this is going to be um, what I get from my radio results is coming from the name for the radio button. And again, I should clean it up um, just in case. Let me print it out so you can see what it is. And we'll go back to the form. And we'll choose a radio button. So there's A, submit. There's the option that they chose. And again, that's coming from this value and not from the thing I have sitting next to the, uh, the input. OK? Um, with checkboxes, it has a little bit of a different thing because more than one of these can be checked. So the first thing that you need to note is that your name for all the related checkboxes has to be the same, and it has to have square brackets to indicate that this thing is sending an array. Then your values for the individual ones are different. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to my process. I'm going to say, okay. This is my check result. And here I'm going to put this. And I'm not going to wrap this guy in a clean because it's actually an array it's sending to me. So if I wanted to clean up the values, I'd have to iterate over that array to see them. And just to prove to you that it's an array, I'm going to call the array method print r to show you what's in here. All right, so let's go back over here. And let's choose a couple of these guys. So we'll choose alpha and beta and submit it. And here's my array. So you see it builds a numerically indexed array with the values that I selected. So in cell element 0 is alpha and element 1 is beta. It's getting those values from right here, alpha and beta. If I go back and select um, a different one, here's my results. So now I got alpha and gamma. Even if I only, oops, only select one of them, it is prepared to send an array. So even if I only have one value checked, it still puts it in an array. So if I need to process these, I got to pull the values out individually from the array to see them, probably with like a loop or something. Okay. And then the last thing that I have on here is a, uh, a color selector, which is kind of cool. We don't use it that much, um, but my input type is color. Here's the name of my element is chosen color. So let me go handle that uh, color choice post array, thing called chosen color. This guy I can wrap in clean because it's not an array, so let me do that. And this is my clean function that I wrote in the previous set of videos. And let's see what comes out when I echo color choice. Okay, come back over here, go back here. Here's my color selector, so it gives me a little thing to select some colors from. Let's choose red. Okay, when I submit, this guy is sending the hex value of whatever color I chose. Um, so that's how you handle some non-text-based input from a form.